So you love you love the pages. You request the full. That one's pretty good with a couple of rounds of revision that you're going to okay. suggest to the author. Um, what happens next at that point? I assume you, you you do some kind of call and you're going to be evaluating the author and you're looking at social media. How are you deciding was this um, something? I don't look very much at social media. That's just me. I think that that's very different from agent to agent. Um, I, I really, what I want to do is I want to get on the phone and talk to that person about the book and talk to them about what I think we will need to cover in revision. If we need to, if we don't really need to do anything, then I'll say that. But, um, what I want to make sure both for me and for the writer is that we are seeing eye to eye in terms of what I think I need to ask for in terms of revision. If I have, you know, if I'm coming to the writer and saying this whole middle section, we got to take it out. And that is not what the writer wants to do. Then we're probably not a good fit. So I'm try to be as upfront and clear as I can about what I think I'll be asking for or, or wanting to talk about in revision and, and, and hopefully start the conversation right there on the phone. I, um, never want a writer to feel like they can't, it's not a conversation, um, uh, because at the end of the day, it's not my, it's not my book. Um, it's, it's the writer's book. So, um, but if it feels like we're on the same page about that, um, you know, we talk a lot about the process, what submission will be like, you know, what happens if I, if, if the book doesn't sell, um, some people want to talk about what happens if we're, if we've decided we're not going to be able to work together for whatever reason anymore, what, what happens then different people have different questions, but I want to answer every question they have. Um, I, I never want my clients to feel like they're in the dark. I, um, am, try to be as transparent about everything as I can be and as communicative as I can be. That's part of the reason why I don't want to have a list that's like 60 people long because um, communication and transparency, it takes time. Um, and I need to be able to have that time for all of my clients. Um, so yeah, so if that conversation feels like we're in the same page about revisions and we've connected, um, and I, I'll hope we can work together. That sounds like a plan to me. Uh, just out of curiosity, I, I think this is probably a bad idea, but if an author is thinking she wants to cut out the whole middle section and she wants to take <laughs> 250,000 book down to 100,000, um, or, or I guess 30,000. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> Even more. Um, I don't want to do that, but you're the only agent that's shown interest. So I'll say, yes, I, we could do that. And then I'm going to be a little bit combative along the way. Is that worth it? Are we wasting everybody's time if, if an author is thinking that way? Yeah. Yeah. It's just going to be frustrating for everybody. And it's not, it's not really worth it. Um, I've never had that happen. Um, <laughs> or people are really pulling the wool over my eyes and I'm not realizing it, but um, I have never <laughs> had... So it's, it's going great. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, yeah, that wouldn't, I just think it would be, it certainly would be um, confusing for me. You know what I mean? Like if we just talked about this and you seemed on board, but now you're not. Um, I, I mean, I would just want to talk about that with the person and try to hear what they're saying about it. But I ultimately think it would be super frustrating for the writer. Um so why, why put yourself in that position? You know what I mean? Where you're going to be hearing for the writer to put themselves in a position where they're going to be hearing feedback that they neither believe in nor can take. I mean, why do that? Seems painful. Gotcha. Well, thankfully the authors who are, are listening to us on this show are all honest, straightforward, yeah. straight, straight yeah. shooters. They know. Um, so now comes to a point where okay well we're going to sell this book obviously and then we're going to plan for the longer career what kind of conversations mm -hmm. are going on around there how do you go about making a plan one of my favorite parts i love talking about the big picture um and then sort of scaling it back down to the where we are right now um but i mean it sort of starts with 
okay, let's talk about, you know, what your next ideas are. What's, what, what do you, are there any ideas sort of bubbling around in the back of your head or maybe quite, um, maybe some of the new ideas are way more developed than that and you're already working on them. But I love talking about um, the, what are, what's new, what's in, what ideas do you have? S some people need to kind of write into it for a while and, um, and sort of see where it's going and they don't always necessarily have the whole idea ready right at the outset. Um, other people are, are more um, plotters um, and they, they, can, they can send me like, you know, a couple of really concrete thumbnails for a couple of different story ideas. Um, so that's sort of one level, the kind of what's the next book level. And if, if you know, we, something we'll be talking about um, is if the first book was a middle grade book, um, should the next book be a middle grade book? What if you want to write a YA novel? What if you want to write a picture book? Um, when's the ideal time to do that? Um, you know, usually um, what I think is, is helpful in terms of building career is to follow up, you know, with a similar, uh, with a project that's in a, the same um, age category. So if your first book was a middle grade novel, it's great. If your next book's going to be a middle grade novel, that's not always how it's going to go. Um, and I'm really open to talking about that and strategizing, well, okay, if the next book's going to be middle grade, I mean, I'm sorry, YA, where do we go with that? How's that going to work? What's that going to look like? How do we keep building the middle grade part of your career as well as the YA side of things? You know, how, how doing all of that is really exciting and interesting to me. And I mean, I'm not, all constantly asking my clients this, but it's ultimately the, the, the big, big picture question is, you know, what is the book that you are most excited about writing? What is the project that you is closest to your heart and the one that you're maybe scared to write, the book you needed as a kid? What are those projects and how do we create a path that lets you write all those books, whether they're in the same category or not. How do we stack it? How do we approach it? How do we put that all together? That's a conversation that I love, love having. So in the situation where we're writing a middle grade right now, and then the next one's gonna be a gritty YA, mm -hmm. um, and then I'm gonna switch back to middle grade, is that an idea of now you've gotta do twice as much work off there because you're basically gotta fuel both readerships or is that a smart idea in case one of them doesn't do so well? Well, this, this new sale is completely, this is a completely untested market for this author. Right. I mean, I don't, it, it is certainly at the, uh, how many hours does a human have in the day is a really important question. <laughs> um, and making sure that you're not, you um, uh, getting yourself into a situation where you're going to get completely burned out is, is really important. Being able to, I just was having a conversation with one of my clients today about, we sold a lot of books for her last year. She's a picture book writer. So she's, it, these are shorter texts, but they are really challenging in their own way and take a lot of time too. Um, and um, so she's been just like, breakneck speed with deadline, 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 deadline. And she was saying, I, I, I've got to take some time. Um, and we were talking about how it's really important for her to have the mental space because otherwise, she, you know, now she's got a lot of things in the pipeline um, because of the, you know, how long it takes books to come out. It's like 2024 is going to be a big year for her, but looking forward beyond that, somehow, she has to carve out the time to think of what's coming after. Um, and you can't fill yourself with so many deadlines that you don't have space for that. So there, there is that. Um, but I mean, I guess I tend to believe that ultimately there is a way, if, if, if my client is passionate about writing a project, be it in the same category or a different one, there's a way to make it all work. Um, it's, it's up to the, the writer and like kind of what they want to accomplish and, and how they pace themselves. Um, 
And I think there's a lot of writers who are like, they just like to juggle a lot of things and they want to do a lot and they, you know, then it's my job to keep up with that. And then there are other people who need to go slower. They just do. Um, and that's fine too. 